Councillors, guests, welcome tonight to our second, no, third budget meeting, I believe. Um, glad to have uh, you join us tonight for this one. And um, we will call the meeting for order as of 7 p.m. Uh, today's meeting is being uh, streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archive video, as long as the mayor remembers to press the right buttons, apparently. Uh, to those uh, present in the gallery today by attending a public meeting of the council, you are consenting to your image, voice, and comments being recorded. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and the comments will form part of the live stream and the archived record. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Attendees are advised that they may be subject to legal action if their actions result in inappropriate and or unacceptable behavior and or comments. Uh, thank you for your attention to that uh, preview. At this time, um, your mayor has a cold, so um, poor Todd. Um, if I fall over, uh, I'm sure the deputy mayor will pick me up before the night's over and uh, we'll continue. Uh, let's um, proceed with um, a little bit of business here to get this meeting rolling. Um, at this time, I have a motion to approve our agenda that reads as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Can I invite a mover for that? Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Kellum, seconded by Councillor Rothwell. Any discussion or debate? I see none. I assume that, um, I assume that, are we doing, um, we're using Skype tonight? Yeah, I'm, see. I'm seeing some problems here with my login too. Okay, so maybe we should just do this manually. Um, all those in favor? Any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. The uh, item 1.3 on our agenda then is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Uh, as per uh, a recommended procedure, uh, council, councillors are invited to declare potential conflicts of interest, uh, both in the print and uh, to declare an open session of the meeting uh, the nature of their conflicts. So councillors, do any of you have conflicts this evening? I believe Councillor Barnes has submitted documentation. Um, yes, I would declare a conflict of interest on 4.2, specifically uh, the North Perth um, Spinright Child and Family Center, and of course 7.1, the confirmatory. I have grandchildren attending the daycare. Great, thank you. Any, anything further from other councillors at the table tonight? Seeing none, that's great. We'll move forward uh, with uh, our next item, item 2.1 on our agenda. Uh, consideration uh, for our approval here of, um, of the uh, previous uh, budget committee minutes. Uh, I have a resolution to effect that that reads as follows. The minutes of the December 11th, 2020 budget meeting be adopted. Can I invite a mover for that? Councillor Seiler, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Andreessen. Any comments or corrections that you've taken note of? Seeing none, I guess uh, we can have the vote. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to uh, past item three. We have no delegations or presentations uh, committed for this meeting, which brings us to uh, item four on our agenda, reports. And uh, we begin, I believe, uh, with operating budget report for the Listowel BIA. Uh, first, in terms of our agenda, item 4.1, uh, and then following that, we'll get into the uh, capital budget book, I believe. So at this time, I'd like to invite Scott Patterson, who's the vice chair of the Listowel BIA, to uh, present the budget on behalf of that organization. And we need that microphone turned on. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Uh, again, Scott Patterson. I'm the Vice Chair of the Listowel BIA. I'm here tonight to give you just a brief overrun of what we did in 2019 and uh, our budget proposal for 2020. 
Uh, so as you all know, the Listowel BIA continues to play a lead role in marketing and the beautification of the town of Listowel. Uh, this benefits the commercial businesses and properties, as well as the community. Um, it makes Listowel a desirable place to live, work, play, and visit. So with regard to 2019, some of the highlights were that we had our annual AGM and meeting. Um, we did event support for items such as Patty Fest, Yarn Bomb, the Chamber Awards, and the Santa Claus Parade. Uh, we get heavily involved in the beautification of the town, and that's typically through the flowers that you see in the downtown core and spread throughout the town. We're involved in the general marketing of Listel as a place to shop, dine, and discover, and that's done through radio, paper, website as well. Um, we have a continued increase in social media presence uh, through Discover Listowel, through our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter accounts. And uh, through 2019, we also continued our support of the Win This Space 2018 uh, winner. The Christmas holiday season is definitely a big part of what we do. Um, through 2019, we had a decorating contest for local businesses. Uh, we had a decorating contest for local residents as well. We had our Roaming Santa program again, and we also get involved with the town decorations. And again, we continue to increase in the Discover List while branding through marketing initiatives using social media, print, and radio. For 2020, we are requesting a total budget of 119,000. Uh, this is an increase of 13,510 from 2019. And the increase takes into consideration administrative and operating increases in costs from 2019 to 2020, a future community improvement project, and win the space 2020. Uh, with the exception of those who are impacted by the new levy maximum and increased BIA boundary, almost all businesses will see little to no impact to the levy from 2019. With regard to the 2020 budget, it will help us to fund events and coordinate and participate or support events that are held by others. It will help us with our Win This Space 2020 project. Uh, again, the ongoing marketing promotion through local media, newsprint, radio, social media, and web. Our summer beautification project, the flowers again. And again, the holiday decoration, uh, maintenance, and add-ons. Our budget also goes to our part-time coordinator, uh, she's here tonight if there's any questions uh, and she currently works 24 hours a week it goes to training for the coordinator and also for the board members it covers our meeting expenses it also goes to online software and memberships um, sponsorships of various events that promote listable it covers our audit fees and municipal staff support internal transfers grass cutting banners and christmas decor it also covers general office supplies and cell phones um, copier, print, postage, all the necessary stuff to make the BAA operate. The focus of the BIA for 2020 is our strategic plan, uh, which will be developed in conjunction with the municipality. Uh, we intend to be a community and event support, again, through other initiatives done by ourselves or support others. We will continue to increase the Discover List will brand and Market List will as a place to shop, dine, and discover through the execution of the 2020 marketing plan. Our BIA events, our seasonal promotions and beautification, and our Win This Space 2020. And with regard to Win This Space 2020, it launches on March the 4th this year. Uh, applications for that will be accepted from March the 4th to April 3rd. Training will take place from April 22nd to May 20th. And the finale will take place on June the 10th. And hopefully, if all going well, the new business will open again in fall of 2020. That's our brief presentation. If there's any questions or concerns, Lisa and I'd be happy to try and answer them for you. Thanks, Scott. My apologies. Councillors, any questions for BIA representation? Councillor Seiler. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Uh, Scott, just for confirmation, we talked about our entrance signs there back a while ago, and where else are we with that? Is it still in the budget? Are we still doing the same thing like we did before, putting $1,500 per sign away? Or? Uh, Lisa, can back through you. Um, Lisa, can back me up. This. My understanding is it's still with the town. It is carried in our budget currently, the same as it has been in past years. It's still part of our overall budget. 
Um, the request is still before the town to assume ownership of those signs, but there's been no confirmation or acceptance of that. Thank you. Councillors, any further questions or comments uh, at this time pertaining to the BME presentation? Thank you very much. Thank you. So quick change of books now, councillors, to the capital or projects uh, books. Um, I believe that brings us to item 4.2 on our agenda, which is the uh, projects budget from the clerk, daycare, and building department. And we'll call on uh, North Perth clerk, Pat Verfelds, to present that budget. Year number 11, Pat. So <clears throat> as an overview then um, for the uh, clerk's department, no capital items were planned for 2019 and moving forward, we do not have any plans for 2020. Similar to the building department, just to surmise there again, no capital projects were planned for 2019 and nothing is planned for 2020. So our capital um, presentation tonight is basically for our childcare capital projects. To provide you with an overview um, for 2019, and we're very fortunate that most of the monies that we have for capital expenditures are provided to us through applications to the provincial government, and it's flowed to us through our consolidated service manager being the city of Stratford. So for uh, capital projects that were completed, um, we had some monies through fundraising events. Um, in the past, being the Cinderella's ball mostly. So we were able to spend some money in our preschool playground. What we did there is we expanded the sandbox um, for ability for more children, as well as we put a roof over top to shelter the children um, as well. Moving forward with some of the health and safety funds that we were applied for and did receive in 2018 was the planting of the spruce trees. And if you've been by, um, I think they're, they're looking very nice. We did have them planted on the west side of the playground as well as the south side. The hope there is again to provide some shelter um, for the children and the staff from the wind and uh, the cold coming down Binning Street. A buddy, a buddy bench as well was purchased for the infant toddler program. Um, this is part of the whole bullying and uh, new initiative and there's been several that have been put into schools and other locations. Um, so money was spent to put one into the toddler program as well. Um, as part of the early on in North Perth taking over that program, we were um, provided with capital funds. Those capital funds were spent in 2019. All those furnishings have been purchased. As well as we tried to meet the demand of childcare, emphasis on trying. Um, in order to do that, we did set up a program in our early on room and moved it to the Christian school, as you know, in September. We did receive some monies to start up those programs. As well, that project's been completed. As part of the agreement, when we allowed the naming of the North Perth Spinrite Child Care Centre, um, part of it was that the municipality would receive $5,000 for 10 years um, that would be utilized within the programs. So this past year, the plans were that they would be purchased, we would purchase educational materials, all part of this new emergent curriculum. A lot of it was called what they call today loose parts, and staff did proceed with those purchases as well. And, as, and one of our bigger projects, as you know, is the construction of the new Moncton Library and Family Child Care Centre um, in Moncton. And that addition has commenced. Um, Dawn Construction has been the successful um, construction firm that has started. And at this point in time, the foundation is in, the backfill is completed. We just need a load of lumber to come by and we can start framing the building. 
The last project completed in 2019 was extra funding that we did receive as part of the early on, and that was called the entrance way funding. And what we were um, asked to do is to purchase and do some minor renovations to um, have a more welcoming and visible um, center. And some monies have been spent, and we've been working with the city on trying to make the right decisions there. Like I said, some have been sent, spent on some painting and some wall decor, some furnishings, and you'll note that we have some remainder to spend in 2020. So go th going forth with the 2020 projects, um, the health and safety funds carry over. Like I mentioned, we'd like to purchase uh, another buddy bench for the for the infant toddler side as well. With that, we hope to do a little better job of landscaping around those benches and making them more aesthetically pleasing. Um, we did apply again in 2019 um, and we were successful in, in acquiring some more health and safety funds. And as noted in my report, hoping those monies would be used to uh, purchase some new um, uh, drinking tumblers and. Um, materials for the programs, as well as now the loose parts for the school age programs. In regards to the Moncton family grouping and early on center, um, as I stated, the foundation has started and we are hoping to have the project construction finished the 1st of August so that staff and myself can work forward with setting it up and be functional on September the 8th. Uh, again, as part of the um, $5,000 to be received by Spinright. Um, the staff have gone forth and provided me with some items that they would like to purchase with that money. And just so council knows, staff do pre um, prepare a summary. We provide it to the Spinright executive um, and it is, a, is always endorsed. So we're not necessarily going out spending money without some sort of endorsement from them as well. So those items will be purchased in 2020. And finally, we hope to work forward. We were fortunate receiving another $5,000 to add to the entranceway fund. And then we will um, hopefully complete that project in 2020 as well. So lots of exciting things happening in childcare. And the question is, hopefully in September, will we continue to, or hope to meet the need of uh, the demand? And my only hope is yes. And if not, I guess we'll be coming up with some more solutions. Be happy to entertain any questions that you may have. Councillors, any uh, questions for Ms. Bearfelt? Councillor Seiler. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Just, uh, Pat, how, how did that work out when the space wasn't in Moncton and, and you had to work with, with uh, Christ, was it Christian Church? How did it work out with the Christian yeah. school? Is the, is, is the kids going there? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we have 21 children attending there every day now. So it's been, and it's been, I like to say, a, a very positive relationship with that Christian school board. Not that we always haven't had, but this is new for us working with that board, and it's been very positive. Good, thank you. Good, thanks. Uh, Councillor Andreessen. Uh, thank you. Thank you, through you, Mayor Todd. Um, just wondering about how many spaces will be in the new Moncton um, daycare so that is set up for a family grouping of 15 children um, along with an early on room that the present early on staff will program from. And in addition to that, we've just received uh, approval that we're going to run before and after school programs from there as well. And um, just for like that, is that capacity then, that 15, like you wouldn't be able to have more than that, that would be the rule? That's right. That's a okay. family grouping number. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Further questions, Councillor Councillor Johnston. I don't know if this is to Pat, Fran, or Becky, or whoever. The, with regard to the Moncton building, we're taking three hundred eighty-five thousand out of library reserves. Is that general library reserves, or is that set up for Moncton? And is that all? Are we killing that reserve? Okay. Is is that a month? Is that a general reserve? The library, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll uh, gently remind staff that because this is being broadcast, we need to have microphones oh, on. Thank you. All right. Uh, other questions, councillors? Anything further? 
If I can make one further comment, just this morning I have had uh, a meeting with the staff and some of the board representatives from the here in Perth Catholic School in regards to the St. Mary's project as well. As you know, we've agreed to move forward with that. It is um, presently at the block wall stage, um, hoping to be up and operational September 8th as well. At the, prior to this morning's meeting, it was not necessarily clear on what role I was going to play in regards to setting it up. But as I just mentioned to Chris, um, the role is greatly going to be ours. And so I do not have before you today a capital sheet in regards to spending that will be done there. I'm not even absolutely sure of the monies I'm going to receive. But the monies will be for everything from setting up the servery, the kitchen, all the furnishings for the early on, the family grouping, um, as well as the daycare center and the playground. So those monies will all be flowed through the municipality in order to have that happen as well. And you have a timeline on that, Pat? Well, I hope to have it up in operational September 8th. Okay, very good. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Anstead. Thanks, Mayor Todd, through you. Um, Pat, I just, I don't know if we're gonna, you're going to cover or what already was covered, just with the new, all these new spaces in terms of staff. Um, how many staff are you going need to need to hire? I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you. Yeah. That. <laughs> um, at this point in time, I've been working with the city and trying to understand how that um, is going to come together. Okay. The family grouping is a new ratio. It's not as complete as one to five, one to eight, and one to ten, um, as what we've been. Or sorry, one to five. Um, so I need to work on that. And as soon as I have that presentation ready, I'll be bringing it. I'm sure to the HR committee. Okay. Thank you. Anything further, councillors, on uh, this report? Thank you. If you'd invite Councillor Behrens to return to the chamber, that would be helpful. Okay, that brings us to item 4.3 on tonight's agenda, the uh, presentation of projects from the Finance and IT, IT Department, and uh, that will be Francis Hale, our Director of Finance and Treasurer. Welcome to the item. Good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council. Um, an overview of last year's finance uh, projects uh, included uh, the development charges background study and um, our strategic asset management policies. Hempson uh, Consulting helped us with both of those projects and they uh, are completed. Uh, as well, we took on an RFP and uh, selected a, um, a consultant with regard to our, um, our oh, pardon me, I've jumped, I'll just take one step back. Uh, we also had a project with regard to the update for the uh, audiovisual for the council chambers, and um, that has been started and completed as well, and we're still tweaking it here and there, but... Um, it seems to be uh, somewhat improved, and so we're thankful for that. In regard to uh, IT technology services, um, we did update our uh, voice over IP, and uh, we did significant server and hardware upgrades throughout the corporation, and um, looking forward to the completion of that with the uh, core network uh, that remains for 2020 as part of that. As well, we had a consultant uh, work with us to create a five-year plan for IT, and we're still in the throes of that. Uh, I feel that it's coming to conclusion here shortly on Monday night, and uh, then it'll be the implementation of what comes from that. Um, a number of our software applications that we were hoping to implement in finance, we have uh, deferred in waiting for the IT Governance Committee to um, be implemented. And at this point in time, I would uh, just ask uh, Eric and Becky to uh, just highlight the four projects that we have. We have two carryovers from last year and two moving forward for this year. And so um, if I might pass it on to Eric at this point. Thank you. So I recognize uh, Eric Bauer, our IT manager. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, so we have the one carryover project. It was born out of the voice over IP and uh, the master plan. We had uh, penetration tests done 
as part of the master plan, and there was some, uh, we'll call them vulnerabilities that were exposed during that. So uh, the core network upgrade is, is sort of pursuant to all of that. Uh, we noticed some things during the VoIP upgrade and, and the pen test that it now would be a good time. And it, the age of the equipment, it is, is, is past due now. So we have $67,000 for that core upgrade, and it is, well, we've put the RFP out, accepted it, and I have a kickoff meeting tomorrow for that. And that will hopefully be completed by the end of February. I just would take any questions if you have any. Councillors, any questions for Mr. Bauer? Okay. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I gather that Becky Belfour is up next, our Assistant Director of Finance. Or... Welcome, Mayor, Becky. Council, good evening. Um, we have a carryover operating project uh, budget software, which is uh, something that we very much need. Until our IT governance committee is up and running, um, we will uh, just put a hold on that. Hopefully that's very shortly as uh, it's a manual process currently. Uh, our current software only does one year budgeting, so uh, it is a little cumbersome every year. And we tried the flip books this year, which worked better, but um, certainly we need to upgrade our budgeting software. Uh, so with uh, the committee's blessing, we will move forward. Any questions for Ms. Belfour? Okay. I guess that bring uh, Tisha Hale back to the table. Oh, we're going to swap again. Do I need to do this next time? <coughs> uh, for the next one is uh, not IT, and then the next one is myself, which is the asset management plan next steps. So we this year we finished the asset management strategic policy. And you have seen the proposal from Hemson for the asset management plan and the three strategies for the long-term financing. So our next steps will be to just address the current data uh, with department heads, uh, ensure that all data is uh, where it needs to be, make sure our condition assessments are correct and up to date. And the big one is to define level of service uh, and level of service targets uh, for the infrastructure. And so we hope that uh, in speaking with Federation of Canadian Municipalities, there will be another rollout of a grant for us to move forward with this, and we will retain a consultant to work with us uh, on this project. And uh, again, we'll be working with department heads moving forward to uh, make sure that we bring the proper data to you to make great decisions. Thank you. Questions on this one? Can I just inquire in your uh, expenditure line, there's an other for $10,000. Can you just tell us what that's about? Uh, the 10000 is to um, retain um, some summer support staff, potentially, to help collect some of the data that we are uh, potentially missing or ensure that it is up to date. I'm thinking recreation is number one of those, one of those projects. So it was just to have some additional work done um, to ensure our data is correct. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any further councillors? Okay, it looks like Mr. Bauer is back. Good evening again. Uh, so the second part of this is um, for the uh, kick off of the master plan and the governance committee. We are going to, we would like to put out an RFP for, for a chief administrative officer part-time contract um, position that would lay, pardon me, information officer, sorry. Um, they would be charged with uh, forming the governance committee, getting it kicked off. Um, laying out the project roadmap, budgeting, that kind of thing. And then as we go through uh, the software that's been mentioned previously, all the departments are going to come forward with their wish list. Um, and then we would bring that forward to council for your approval. Councillors, questions on uh, this project? Okay. Thank you. 
you. Thank you. Are we wrapping up, Brad? Or that's it. Okay, so, councillors, any further questions about the total projects proposition from the finance and IT department? Can I ask how the spend compares to last year's spend in projects from your department? Um, given that we're earmarking $190,000 for software applications, it is uh, uh, more we, in terms of software. However, we did have a significant spend last year um, in terms of hardware. And um, so it would be, be about double of last year's. but. Um, as you have posed this question to us for all departments, we will be bringing back a comparison of previous years for other departments, both budgeted and actual spends for um, 18, 19, and then the projection that we have for 20 and 21, just so that council can have a look at um, how those comparisons for all departments are, including finance and IT. Um, at your uh, request through emails today. Uh, that would be our response to that. Thank you for the questions. Councillor Andreessen. Uh, thank you for hearing my reply. I was just wondering, Fran, um, in your report, it talked about um, the possibility of funding coming from the province. And um, I just wondered, like, uh, with the bottom line of this budget, how much would you anticipate that impacting this budget? Um, for um, the uh, strategic uh, asset management, uh, FCM forgot the acronym, is, um, hasn't got their application um, projects out there yet, so we're hoping that they do what they did last year. They say they are. They just haven't um, uh, circulated it yet. So we're hoping for about $40,000 with that one regard. Um, there will be more modernization money as well, and we haven't been told what that is. And so we feel that um, a number of the projects that might come forward from the software request through the IT governance group might be an opportunity to utilize some of the modernization funding that uh, is coming. Now, we have not seen anything. We've just been told that it'll, our, our contacts have indicated it'll be similar to last year. So that was about a half a million dollars for North Purse. So that was, um, uh, we, I don't know if you recall, but we spent that on, um, the 40,000 was allocated to the budgeting software. We did some gravel, we did the AV for here. There was a number of projects that we uh, took advantage of that funding. And so hopefully we'd have that opportunity to do that again in 2020, but they, ha they haven't gotten it out yet, so we don't want to count our chickens before they've hatched. Okay, thank you. So just to clarify on that question, um, the assumptions that you've placed forward before us then assume uh, that FCM might be coming, but the other funds are not actually spoken for yet in these uh, estimates? The FCM is, uh, is for come? this project, is still to come. Uh, we have, we're, we're trusting that we, that one's fairly secure, but we might have to come back. And um, the 45 for the budgeting software was from the modernization monies that were distributed in 2019. And so therefore, that's why we kept that project as a, a carryover so that we could utilize that funding. We think it's, uh, very strategic for council to have appropriate and actually the public too uh, so that uh, we can provide um, uh, more than a one year budget process we, and legislatively as, as well we're to do five to ten so we're looking forward to that I think it'll be um, very helpful to department heads to see what's ahead of them but essentially you're saying that if further modernization money comes, it's, a, it's like a windfall and that we have accounted for the things that we need uh, from funds currently committed or available to the municipality and uh, the, that money would be a um, happy time for us to deal with some of the other projects and to fund some of these. I concur. Thank you. <laughs> further questions? 
Kessler has stepped in. It's on our case and bird through you to Fran. Um, I know you mentioned again, Fran, about the payroll and HR system. We've talked about that before. Um, there's, so there's no spending plan for 2020. It would be 2021. That we uh, we're ho we have $190,000 earmarked for 2020. Um, I don't want to say that payroll will be first. I'd like to leave that for the governance group. I hope to make a good case, though, to that group to say why payroll and the HR is very important. But uh, there's competing requirements from all departments, so I feel that that's something that group is going to have to work through uh, because in the past we would all do our own thing and then they wouldn't talk to each other. I think this is going to be a real opportunity for uh, that application to provide us with less software that's more efficient and more usable. Right. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? I will state for the record that I'm relieved that we're not hiring a contract CAO. We have a, we have a good one sitting right here in the room, so <laughs> you're not off the hook that easily. <laughs> Mr. Snell, sorry. <laughs> I thought it'd just be like a helper. <laughs> he does need that. Okay. Um, all right. That brings us to well, thank you, team. Uh, that brings us to agenda item 4.4, which is tab five in the project's um, guide. And I see that Sherry Bearfelt is here, so I'm assuming that you will yeah. step in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're back with Fran. <laughs> Very good. Sherry's here to hold me up. <laughs> and and I'm here to hold me up. <laughs> It's a hold-up night, apparently. I meant to, prop, to prop me up. Hold-up words are not ones that we should use in the context of budgeting, just so that you know. That's great. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, Rebecca has provided us with a very brief overview. And uh, as she's noted in her overview, she's the, 2019 was very productive for the library in terms of uh, sorting out the Moncton branch. And uh, that work will continue in 2020. There are seven projects for um, the library for 2020, uh, five of which are carryovers. So we have the Listwell Masonry and Pergola repairs, the sewer hookup in Atwood, the power door operations, uh, the exterior signage at the library, and some painting that's required within the library. Of course, the new and exciting projects for uh, 2020 include the Moncton Library Furnishing and um, the North Perth Library Community Hub Design Development. Uh, Rebecca's provided um, project sheets for each of these. And uh, she's detailed what needs to be done or what could be done. And I'd be more than happy to go over any of them in detail. And Sherry's here this evening as well if there's questions that I can't field for you. But um, it would seem like in 2018 and 2019, there was a lot of initiatives that turned out to be more expensive than they thought that they were going to be. And uh, I feel her pain because... Um, um, it's very difficult when you move forward with something and then realize that it's going to be a, a lot bigger renovation or project than you had initially thought it would be. So some of these things are on delay until the next step in other projects, so there'll be some um, block building on these. But um, if there are any questions, by all means, be more than happy. Councillors, do you have questions for the library team? Councillor Siler. Thank you, Mayor Todd. <clears throat> Where boats are we with the, the roof that we put on on the library? The one, or is it pretty well up to after? Um, to my knowledge, yes. If there's some issues, I'm not aware of them. No. It's worked out well. I, I know the first for two or three years there. There, there are other issues with the building, and there's a list. <laughs> the not leaking but the roof is good. Yeah, yeah. It's been a continuous project, that's for sure. It's never let up from 20. Yeah. 
it just leaks from a few other places, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. Uh, further questions? Uh, Councillor Rothwell. Thank you so much, Mr. Merrick. Through you, uh, Grant, I didn't hear you mention specifically about the uh, Atwood uh, Library sewer hookup. Is that a carryover from 2019 then? Like the project That's wasn't been a carryover since 2009. Yes. Okay. And we are penalizing the library uh, the same that we would have any residential or commercial customer in that settlement area for not hooking up. But um, it's very difficult because the septic and all the plumbing is to the rear. And, of course, the hookup is to the front. And uh, there's no basement to mention. So it has been a difficult one. My understanding is that they just let it go through bids and tenders. And there was a, um, a contractor who did bid on it. And uh, so I think we're in the process of, or there's a couple actually, that bid on it, and we're in the process of just ensuring that they're uh, appropriately um, equipped and have experience at doing some of this work because it won't be an easy job. And the supplementary, if I can, if not, not that we need to know the specific number, but is the number that we have budgeted uh, going to cover those? Actually, costs? it's not too bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good news. Thank you. Further questions, Councillor Duncan. Fran, what, what is the penalty then per year to the library? I forget, but it has been, it's been fairly steep because um, we were punishing people for not hooking in. And um, I know we did, as Council knows, we did help the last couple make their way to it. So it will certainly uh, benefit their operations by a couple, I'd say, hmm. Yeah, we're probably going with about 200 bucks. I forget just off the top of my head. Um, but I can get that information for you. It will be substantial savings going forward for them. Yeah. Further questions, councillors? I would like to pick up the, um, the uh, masonry repairs and pergola replacement. And um, I'm looking at that budget of 19000 I'm going to assume that... that that does not include the pergola replacement at this point in time. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on the, the library estimates? Uh, Councillor Rothwell. Further to that point, uh, Mr. Mayor, do we, um, the, I noticed in the, the write-up that uh, was provided uh, by Rebecca and, and the, that uh, the Rotary Club uh, is providing the funds, so we must have some understanding about how much that would be for the project or... I do not at this point in time. Do you, maybe it Krista? looks like the CAO does. Which your number thirteen? Seventeen. Yeah, go ahead. So my understanding, and um, both dealing with the United Way and the library, is that there has been conversations with the Rotary Club on our grant application that was submitted, and so um, I think it's in Rebecca's write-up. So some of the decisions we made, um, depending on our um, success. I'm going to be very optimistic. Success with with the with the grant process, um, because as you uh, recall, the um, layouts, the layout of the new community hub will probably require that that park be moved. And we've already had some ongoing discussions with the Rotary Club what that might look like. And at, to date, I understand those discussions have been been supportive, but so I think it will depend a little bit on the grant application and how we either relocate or re renew that, that piece of property. So I don't think all the details have been worked out yet. Further, I, I appreciate uh, the, the comments from Chris. It's just a matter that, like, if we just read this document itself in terms of that it would seem as though we're moving forward. So I think it would be helpful if we actually stated that to say is that this project may not be moving forward uh, on the basis of the hub. I mean, I just, I just know it says the... Well, it, it just seems to think that we're moving ahead and it doesn't stage about the possibility of moving, that's all. And, and I would concur, actually. I, when I read it, I was uncertain, as, and that's why I asked the question, whether the pergola was being dealt with. Um, and my impression is that this budget is allocated moving forward for the masonry ceiling and its sort of highest priority fixes, likely uh, to the Carnegie portion of the library, 
that's the working assumption that I have. Does that sound right to you, Trisha? Yeah. Yes, I'd like to suggest that we change the name of the project just to simply the the Sewell Library Masonry Repairs, and we take the pergola out, and because that is contingent on the rest of the project. So, and, and so that's probably a fair comment. Um, I think it was more that she's wanted council to be aware of the fact that the Rotary were partnering with the library to uh, make those changes as the hub is developed. And I picked up the impression from Sierra and Smell's comments that we will handle those funds from the Rotary Club responsibly moving forward and find an appropriate home for them depending on the results of, of our application and, and further action from council and the province and all the good players. Does that seem right, CEO Snow? Yes, and I think the second sentence refers to the entire budget, and I think the library board has directed that we only proceed with uh, um, the immediate repairs to, to basically ensure public safety, and the rest of the project will only be handled until we know the decisions of the grant. Any further questions around the library spending estimates? Councillor Rockwell? Not, not a question, but uh, perhaps, uh, Chris, do you want to let uh, Council know what we heard at Roma just in terms of the number of applications that have been received in terms of those two uh, applications? I, I think we know the number, but it's substantial. Yeah, I don't have the exact number. It was over 1,000. 1,200. Yeah, 1,200. And I, I did some rough calculations on my calculator, and if everybody, every grant was successful for the money available, it was like $44,000 for each application. And I know several municipalities have I've got multi-million dollar applications out there. So there's, the, the ministry was, was, was very clear that the, prod, the grant was oversubscribed <laughs> and um, we're, not everybody's going to get their, their project wish list in, in for, through that process. In fact, I, I think it was... Not the news we wanted to hear, but... Yeah, exactly. It was it was sort of quite clear that they were caught by surprise, and perhaps they need to enrich that fund. Um, and you know, specifically, go ahead, CEO Snow. I, I understand. In speaking to some ministry staff, it's really the first time that many recreation and cultural projects have been eligible since the old Ontario program. So um, that's a lot of pent up demand. Floodgates are open. And, and not that much of a flood, apparently, if no. uh, we're doing math like C.A. Snell has suggested. Further questions or comments on library estimates? Okay, thank you thank for you. that. Uh, next up is item 4.5. That's our recreation department estimates, and I'll call on Amy Gangle, our interim manager of recreation, to uh, present those estimates. Recreation Department has chosen to uh, be a pilot uh, just with the recent draft uh, strategic planning. Uh, staff took this information and took our capital items and matched them up with the uh, goals and the um, five pillars that we have for that just to help council with identifying it um, and let them know that staff recognize where uh, these capital items can uh, do fit in. Uh, for those pieces, so just a uh, little bit of information to connect up with the strategic plan as we move forward. I know council has asked for business plan that will come with the other departments as well, so this is sort of a just a preempt uh, quick synopsis specific to our capital items. So 2019 capital project review, so the following projects were completed in 2019. We purchased the Parks Rural Air Raider, uh, the Alma Logan Recreation, Projects were completed, so this was the roof refurbishment and the uh, uh, replacement of the uh, refrigerator condenser from the old arena to uh, Elma Logan. Uh, refrigeration controls were installed at Steve Kerr and Wallace Community Center. Uh, park truck was replaced. In the EMCC projects, there was a floor scrubber purchased and a new playground swing purchased and installed. 
uh, and the parking lot improvements for Robert Mayer's Park has been completed, as well as the administrative building light retrofit program. The administrative building project, this was the, uh, to have a staff access for safety uh, for the um, elevator uh, maintenance room. We have just, uh, in consulting with finance, we've uh, just shifted that into the administration operating budget. It was $3,000, so just over there. Uh, 2020 capital projects. So the parks and recreation staff, this, this list is an ambitious one. We all recognize this. The staff do recognize that. We have uh, had several discussions as a team discussing what our, what we hear from our community, what we see uh, from an infrastructure perspective. We had a really good meeting with our finance staff. We very much appreciate their support. Uh, to uh, go through our, our list to be able to present you what you see uh, before you. So the first capital project that's carryover is the facility and trail signage. Uh, the next page, uh, Pat will have a picture of this is a sample of what the park's signs will look like. The signs information is complete. The trail markers are complete. We have had uh, meetings with the consultant and we have the locates done, just waiting for uh, the weather for the signs to be designed and uh, installed. So that is anticipated to be done in the spring. Project number two, the Atwood Cenotaph refurbishment. Uh, we, had the, we are fortunate to have some community members. The Atwood Cenotaph refurbishment group uh, has has been very passionate about this moving forward on uh, design. We did receive some funding from the Veterans Canada. What has caused some delays is the masonry work uh, or the, uh, of the wall itself. We've added some pictures to let you know the condition of them. Uh, they are in more disrepair than what was anticipated and we've gotten that con confirmed by any of the masonry constructors that are willing to even come to take a look at it. And they've acknowledged some of them won't even do the work just with the time, how old it is and the fragility of it and uh, just seeing some of the pieces crumble. The group had to reconsider some other options. I did have a public open, uh, open house and after that discussions and direction was given by staff or for staff to look into the replacement with the wrought iron fence. Um, so we've looked into that and we just recently received that quote. That's why it's not in this, in this budget item here. To replace that, it's an additional $26,000 is for the wrought iron fence that we have right now. Does not include, and we're, we're not, you'll see it's not in here. Uh, it does not include uh, removal of the concrete. So the group needs, we need to work with them a little bit more investigate uh, further information um, and see what we can do to work within a budget as close as we can. I, it is possible to ensure this is accessible, that we may first step, remove the wall and then look at replacing uh, a fencing around that, but we'll, we'll have further consult with the group <coughs> and the community as we move forward. Uh, and then they, if they go above budget, then we'll uh, be looking at what options that we do have for them. Okay. Can I suggest maybe at this point, uh, why don't we do your projects uh, two by two kind of thing or sure. give counselors the opportunity to ask questions at uh, in appropriate intervals so that we don't have to sort of process all of this because there's quite a bit here. Looks like Councillor Barron's has a question. Um, just to that, Amy, um, having attended many, many Remembrance Day ceremonies. A lot of communities have revamped um, their memorial cenotaphs. And I'm just curious as to the need for any fence. Mm -hmm. and, and we've had that discussion. Um, the uh, response we were getting from the public is that something that they would like. We, knowing the amount, we would be comfortable to say at the stage, this is what our budget can allow us to open that up. It makes it accessible. We can have, we can do the landscape, we can do the sidewalk and push forward with that. So that is our, our goal um, to move forward with that. 
and some of the most important parts or aspects of the cenotaph is the maintenance aspect with grass cutting and things like that. It is so much simpler and so much easier. And sometimes it's the ongoing maintenance costs that really um, affect your budget more than what the capital cost would be. So I would strongly encourage you to, to take a look at not having a fence, period, because that just improves, um, especially at the Atwood Cenotaph, it improves the accessibility mm -hmm. so much more. I, we do know that are the um, the neighbors that are, are have their lots right beside there. I think some of them have concerns of just the boundaries and those elements. So we even discussed even if we needed to or if there was those pieces to even have just the two fences and leaving it open. So we are still considering those options, and that's why this is a carryover that it has not been complete. We do keep the uh, Veterans Affairs Canada informed, and they're supportive of, of our, our moving forward with it. So thank you for, for sharing that. Those thoughts uh, have been expressed um, and so that's why we're still still working here. I know certainly uh, neighbors there have had ongoing concerns about the quality of grass cutting uh, and that probably speaks to what you're speaking to, Julie. Um, so that is it's certainly worthy of our consideration. Um, I just encourage that we make sure that the community is supportive of this. This is an unusual cenotaph, of course, because it's one of two in Ontario or Canada that is disconnected from a legion branch. And so um, it sort of stands alone and has some unique characteristics in terms of its uh, availability of community support to, to help finance these kind of projects, which is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, Amy, you shared with uh, Recreation Advisory Committee last night, your concern that uh, the funding from uh, Veterans Affairs was uh, may not necessarily be extended beyond the 2020, just yeah. so Council is aware of that. So this is a project that has some urgency that uh, we hope is going to be completed in 2020. Is, is the yeah, being that. respectful of the granting process, even from our end, we do want to complete it this year, whatever it does look like. So. This is the, the time now to, to have those discussions and finalize some decisions so that we can complete this project. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just to follow up then, so do you have a plan to have a community participant meeting to just see, you know, share this new information and see what they're thinking? Yeah, we're regular contact with the community members that have uh, been involved in the process and the design uh, from, from the bidding. Uh, some of them are in Florida right now, but we've even been having some email correspondences. Um, but we can even start on a staff level to, to continue this process. That's great. And I would encourage you to consider the possible role of the Lions Club in making a contribution here should you need additional funds. Uh, any further questions on items one and two in the uh, estimates from uh, recreation? Okay, let's move on to the next two items okay. then. Um, project three, this might be one we could rename actually. It says uh, Memorial Park Barry Fence. It's, a, it's a, the Memorial Gardens uh, from Memorial Park. Thanks, sorry. It's one of my hands. Um, the work that was uh, not complete. What we would like to do is complete a second flower bed that is mirror image to the one that's the top picture of those images you see. Um, and then we would like to replace the post and cable. Uh, we've had to, some of them are rotting as you can see and, and for safety we do need to replace them. Our co original concept directed for, through RAC was to create the uh, memorial gardens all the way around the park for uh, budgetary reasons and time. Uh, we just haven't been able to get that done um, complete, the entire park. So we figure we would do step by step, we'll finish the second garden, and then we will actually put posts and cables for the rest of the park so that it, they're more stable. And then as we get further donations for, to b build additional parks, then we'll replace the posts and cables with those. Project number four is um, Steve Kerr fixtures, furnishings, and equipment. And this Ben Wright Field Park. Uh, 
we do have to complete, so work that was done, the electrical work, security system, interior work for the shed has been completed. Um, the site has been cleaned up and seating was completed. Uh, bike rack was purchased, bench was purchased. Uh, the spin right uh, soccer field opened mid-summer and for public use and it was very well uh, received. Uh, the Steve Kerr, when it was built, there was a down payment made to hydro for $15,000 with the solar uh, panels installed and usage we received just over $10,000 back from Hydro One for that, so we wanted to acknowledge that. 2020 work is to complete the last connection of the irrigation system that needs to be done just with the wet season. We haven't been able to get that completed, so we would want to be able to do that. We've discovered that the Steve Kerr security system has a way for us to activate a system to uh, do a people counter, so to count the number of people uh, entering and using the facility. Um, this will not only give us some data that council's been asking of the usage of the facility, but we also think it would help from an operating perspective. It will give us an idea of not only how many people, but when those people are coming. If it's from 8 to 10 a.m. and there's 100 people that come through that, but we're open from 2 to 4 and there's only 3, then that may help us, you know, in our seasonal changes of some operation of having the facility open. Uh, finally, the sound system has had its uh, hiccups, and we've uh, been working with uh, some uh, experts, having them come on site, take a look, listen, figure things out. Uh, the analysis that we're getting is there isn't sufficient amplifiers and subwoofers and woofers for this size and design of this facility. So uh, additional uh, pieces of equipment, be able to finish that. The facility supervisor wants to meet further and get a better handle because we, of all of the staff for sure, this is something that we want to make sure is fixed and is uh, working properly. We have such a beautiful facility, and uh, it's, it doesn't sound good when, or it doesn't look good when we don't sound good. So this is the, the finish. The 17,341 is what's remaining in this capital. Um, this is just a carryover of this, and this is how these funds will be used. Councillors, questions on these estimates? Uh, sorry, uh, Deputy Mayor Callum. Sir, you, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, uh, Councillor Seiler and I were attended a game on uh, on Saturday. We're just wondering how the railings are coming up at the Steve Kerr complex. So we just received the quotes for that. Actually, I don't have that here. Um, we are going to, I've given approval to go ahead with some of the railings that have the safety component first. Uh, it's a lot of money uh, in order to to have that installed. So we are going to just start with that piece and then we'll build in our operating to continue uh, the other side that doesn't have any at all. So. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Can I ask about the, um, the Memorial Park uh, garden, what is it called, the barrier fence, thank you. Um, in terms of the materials, I, I look at the old materials, the photographs, and, and I see that um, you know, the wood is decayed. Are you considering use of materials that have uh, much longer lives than, than wood, even if the wood is pressure treated? We certainly can. There's an added cost to those. Uh, the um, cedar uh, beds that you see, uh, our maintenance hand assures that they do last for a long, long time. The, um, the upper picture is the new picture. It doesn't look so great being in the summer. Uh, but they seem to be holding uh, very well. They're uh, three years old, I guess two, two years old. Um, so we can certainly consult with our, with our maintenance hand to just see what, what other options we may have. Trying to keep that natural component to it, um, but certainly can, can look at that. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Uh, Councillor Lato. Uh, just further to that, uh, through to you, Mr. Mayor, on that same project, uh, would this be uh, like the existing uh, barriers that were built uh, there? Were they built by North Kerr staff or was there a community group or a high school or how, how were they constructed? The, the 
fence or the garden? No, the, the new, the new garden. The garden was done by Hans Hand. hand. Yep. It is a goal for me to partner up with the high school uh, to be able to work on future projects uh, for recreation. Something like this um, hasn't happened yet. Okay. I, I just encourage that. I think I'm, I'm glad that's on your radar because it's uh, high profile, and I think uh, sometimes. Uh, Having youth that uh, would be involved in a project, they could have that uh, pride and, and uh, of ownership and, and, and building and maybe respected uh, not just by youth but by everyone. I think that'd be a great job. Yeah, we're hoping that through uh, considerations of health and safety, uh, making sure that all the training is there, and I do know that the high school is very good with that. They do that, but whether the school board, it, there's some discussions that have to happen to get those permissions. Uh, if I didn't have to go through those permissions, yes, I'd be going in there with them, but uh, we, we definitely see the value of that, definitely. Great, thank you. Yep, thank you, John. A good idea, thank you. Um, anyone else uh, with questions or comments about those two? Okay, next up. So the Steve Kerr Memorial Complex, this, uh, this is the stationary generator. This is a carryover because, as you can see, this is higher than what was um, presented to you in 2019. We have had site visits with engineers, uh, our emergency coordinator um, and firefighter uh, and uh, the um, fire chief and facility staff uh, to assess what the needs of this generator is for this facility. So in this tour, uh, being part of that, I was made aware that the amount that we had proposed was 166000 that that is actually the cost of the generator alone. That does not include the uh, engineered drawings and it doesn't include the installation. We've been advised that it could be up to 100000 We don't have those final numbers just yet. Uh, the engineers are just completing their report. I just got the drawings on Monday. So uh, as soon as I do get them, I can pass it on to you. Um, but we felt important to bring back to council because this is m significantly more than what was originally indicated in 2019. Maybe I'll pause you yeah. there just so that we have the opportunity to dig into this one. So if I understand you correctly, um, last year we allocated as a project 166,000 and that's been carried over to 2020. And so the balance is going to come from the 2020 budget. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Duncan. <clears throat> Just looking at the specs on the generator, um, it's only got a 25-hour run capacity on the tank of fuel. That seems like an awful small capacity if we're going to use this thing in an emergency. So my other question is, is have we looked at natural gas as a fuel source instead of diesel? Uh, the engineers are actually looking at both those options for us, and they're gonna, that's what I'm looking for in my report to come back with those costs. So we are looking at those two options. Uh, this, I will admit, um, I consulted with the fire chief on what our needs are and what the capacities are, and the 24 hours or 25-hour run capacity was uh, what he said is, is, exists, or what, what we can use. I can hey, certainly it, double it, check that. It looks like the CAO wants in here, so we'll let uh, uh, Chris come in. Go ahead. And although I, I, I think we'll continue to look at natural gas, but one of the things that's been learned by events in other communities, for example, the tor Goddard's Tornado, they lost gas to their community during that event. So um, although we hope that would never happen, it did um, result in a lot of their generators being useless during the tornado because of um, the gas being shot off to the community. So that is something we do have to keep in mind. Um, I think both options have some pros and cons, but it's something we will continue to, to examine. Um, further to Councillor Duncan's question, though, I'm, I'm curious about uh, whether there's any standards of practice with regards to the amount of time that the community should plan for in terms of having a generator. Um, if, as Councillor Point Councillor Duncan points out, it's it's you know 25 hours and then kaput, and we have an emergency that lasts three days. Uh, we might be in some trouble. 
So I'm, I'm curious about what, if anything, the industry says about what's appropriate in this context and what kind of solutions other communities may have undertaken to uh, get beyond the 25-hour capacity or limit that seems to be associated with the technologies. Um, it looks like the CEO Estelle wants to go next. Go ahead. And so I can, certainly Pat's willing to can help me on this, but we have a number of diesel generators throughout the municipality, whether they be at our wells or our fire hall. We do have um, agreements in place with, with suppliers. They, they're aware of our generators and our generator needs during, during emergencies, and they have committed to basically making sure we have the fuel to, to run our systems in, in those emergencies. Now, if it's catastrophic and diesel fuel becomes an issue, we won't be the only ones looking at, looking at that time, but um, that's certainly the commitment we have with our suppliers is, is they know our needs and they're prepared to deliver fuel as required during an emergency. Okay. Thank you. And just to note, the Red Cross has come in and done an audit of the facility, and so they are compiling a report with the CEMC on what the facility has and what the capacity is, and part of that will also be um, – Part of our plan is a list of all of the providers and, and preparations for what's needed to be able to fuel these. So. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Andrews. Uh, through you, Mayor Todd. Amy, could you just remind me, I believe we do have uh, some portable generators that we own, as a right? So could they be used I mean, in an emergency at other sites, facilities? You know, as a you know, as an addition to what we have at Steve Kerr, can they be used at Steve Kerr? Or in addition to, so in elsewhere. Yes, yes. If, if the 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 generators could be used for those elements, it cannot be used to uh, operate the entire facility at for the Steve needs Kerr. it has. But for something else, could be used for sure. In, in another facility. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up, I think, is CEO Snell. Go ahead. So I can expand on, expand on that. So right now we have one portable generator that can be used at um, the three other recreation facilities. So um, Kurtzville, Atwood, and Moncton all have the capabilities to be run off generator power. But it does at this point only allow us to run one of those buildings at a time. So depending on the emergency, and, and, and we have certainly shared those even between communities, um, during an emergency or a long power outage. And, and further to that, Chris, is this building, can you hook up this building to a generator? This, this building actually already has generator power because of its location next to the well. Okay. So in instances where we already have uh, a generator connected to a municipal well, we've tried to use that to supplement other buildings in the proximity. So this would be, this would be a perfect example of that well. If, for, has a generator, and we just um, brought the power over as, to run this building. But wouldn't you need that for the well? It, it, it's capable of running both. Both, okay. Is that automatic? Like it's within that 30-second delay? Yes. Okay. Other questions here? Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just further, Amy, uh, again at RAC last night, we'd asked the question if there was any uh, funding uh, available, and, and you can give the, re the answer to the council. I don't want to spoil your, your answer, but uh, go ahead. As you see in my report, there are no, currently no emergency grants available. Um, that boat has sailed right now. Uh, we are keeping our eye out. We've asked the CMC. Um, I've asked every individual that has any connections whatsoever for anything. Nothing is there right now. Thank you. Yeah. They're start, starting to think you're a stalker, I gather. Yeah, they know me by now. Gotcha. Any further questions on, on this one? Can I ask a really strange question just for my education? In the middle of winter, if, if an emergency happened and the Kerr Arena was used for the purposes of an emergency center, what happens to the ice on the surface? So depending on the requirements or needs um, during the emergency, the ice could be could be kept in if it was only going to if we were only using say the blue line room and the the hall for a shelter. 
in the instance we were ever to deal with a long-term emergency or um, um, a real long-term sheltering situation, we could start the process of removing the ice to to meet those needs. But it would be a call that would, could be made during the emergency if required. And all that information will be in the audit report as well to indicate that. Thank how you. long it takes for the ice to come out, how long we can prepare. And I, I didn't want to be uninformed on this. I'm glad to know the answer to that question. All right. <laughs> Uh, anything further for this project? Okay, let's uh, move on to the next uh, one. Project number six, fairly quickly, is uh, ball field improvement staff uh, have been working away at improving our ball diamonds, just tweaking them, making some look like diamonds or just, you know, tying up things, putting some fencing, uh, benches, those kind of things. So we've been doing well with that. Uh, Minor Ball has been very pleased with the work that we've done so far. They just uh, would like us to continue finishing that up, and we would as well. Uh, Project 7, uh, Listville Kinsman Pool Replacement, uh, as identified in 2019 that this was a 2020 project. Uh, we need to start investigating options for uh, the outdoor pool. The Listful Gidsman Pool is over 50 years old. We did have filtration equipment replaced, so that was 15 years ago, and it's at its life cycle. Um, new regulations and building codes uh, have new requirements of we need to see whether the real estate that we have would be sufficient for uh, replacement in that area or are other locations and other designs component of that. Um, the recommendation for next year is to have some time with consulting to take a look, audit our current facility as far as what we have, what can be done, what designs, where would be uh, pertinent locations for that. Be, then we can get into the schematics of what those designs are, how much this would cost, and uh, moving forward with that. Okay, questions on those two projects? Councillor Behrens. Um, Amy, on, I'm a little bit confused because you said it was identified in the 2019, but you also indicate in your report that this project has prior council approval. Was there a motion that council approved replacement? Sorry, did I say that? Maybe I'm not My reading apologies. it correctly. It's checked on the on the second page of the project sheet that it had prior council approval. This was identified as Earth. a capital project, indicating it was a 2020 project. So that's why I just had it as a carryover. So I can take that off. Yeah, I think we're using that line for something where it shouldn't okay. be used for. There, okay. Um, because council has been made no commitment. And I guess my question is, because we're talking 2.5 to 3 million, um, before we go to the engineers and all of the other stuff, yes, it's important to know what's the best location and where, but don't we need to run some numbers on the usage of the pool and, and the aging facility also that we have in Atwood um, and the possibility of combining the two. I'm, I'm just saying, I, I just want to make sure that we look at all of our options before, um, because I just don't want to spend $3 million on a new pool here and then in two years spend another $3 million to replace another pool when we're not even sure right now if we have the numbers to support a new and enhanced pool that serves both communities. Certainly. Yeah, the options on this topic are endless. Uh, I totally agree. We need to start somewhere. Uh, the recreation master plan uh, recommended that we, uh, because the Listwell pool is 50 years old, that we get some consultation to take a look at that information. So Certainly, we can take a step back instead of looking at it from a design perspective. We can use this consultation to really assess what our needs are. We can do that. Um, yeah, but I'd certainly am asking council's direction on this for sure. I, I will weigh in and perhaps become the most unpopular man in town at this point. Um, I, I concur with Councillor Barron's uh, request. 
Um, I think that uh, when you look at um, some of the numbers, and, and today I certainly have had a series of questions, and I'm sure that, that information will be provided to council in due course, um, uh, it, it worries me that we have two pools in this community. I think from a financial sustainability perspective, um, that is a, a realistic concern. Uh, I gather that some industry estimates suggest that uh, um, you need one pool per 10,000 residents, so we're kind of over-pooled in some ways. And, um, and so as I look at this budget and moving forward, uh, I concur that I think the first analysis needs to be uh, whether we need that kind of extra capacity in a new pool in, in Listowel, or whether this community could survive with a pool that was based in Atwood for the next 15 years until it reaches end of life. And at the same time, and I'll, I'll build on Councillor Barron's comment, we need to know whether the Atwood pool has another 15 years in it or not. So I think, um, you know, this community needs to think a little differently, perhaps, about the pool agenda. I know that there's constant demands um, associated with an indoor pool, um, that's something that could be considered in discussions if we unfold those in 2020. Um, but at the very least, we need to understand um, the viability and our community's commitment to seeing property taxes spent in that way on uh, both capital and maintenance costs for two pools, where in fact some numbers might suggest that, that we only need one. Uh, Councillor Rumpwell. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. And through you, just on that point, if I recall correctly, when we were dealing with the development charges uh, background study, there were specific comments in terms of uh, if the municipality was moving forward with an uh, uh, indoor pool, uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that there was uh, the uh, indication that it, it would be one pool. Uh, and it's not, and the understanding I had was that uh, it would, would no longer be. Um, you know, continue on if we had an indoor pool. And I believe if we look at the uh, background report uh, that was uh, that we had, that's that's where the part of the conversation happened in terms of one pool, and it was an indoor one. If we were going that way, in terms of what the development charges background study was saying. So. Sure, and 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 um, and again, I think council will be given information in due course because the interest indoor pool um, persists and comes up all the time. Um, I know that um, uh, Ms. Gangle has been working hard with her team to collect data from other communities of our size that are reasonable comparators and in our neighborhoods so that we can understand um, clearly what would be involved in both capital and maintenance, more importantly, operational investments. Um, I've seen she's been kind enough to share with me a first look at some of that data. and it's not a pretty picture. So I, I don't think that comes as any surprise to councillors that indoor pool is, is absolutely uh, um, not going to break even. It's going to be a commitment of taxpayer dollars or it's going to be a commitment uh, in terms of high fees. We can charge high fees to uh, maintain such a facility as well. And, and um, given the brave new world uh, we appear to be in, in which even our own citizens are suggesting that we consider a uh, fee for services in more and more of our services. Um, there may be an opportunity there, but um, brace yourself. That's about all I can say with regards to, to that kind of project. So um, thank you for the questions. I don't want to dominate the airwaves here. Councillor Seiler. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Not more of a question, just more of a comment. I feel that our list of Kinsman pool, I don't go back as far as when it was built or how the funds were raised, but we've been very lucky to have had the Kinsman put that pool in place for us. And we also have a splash pad that has been put beside it. I think it was a common Cheryl. This is Lissel Kinnett's. Lissel Kinnett, okay, Lissel Kinnett's put that splash pad in, and we've been very fortunate to have that, for them to do that. So location, I think that we had the location of that splash pad there and the pool together. I, you drive past there and you see them, people using both. So that's my, my, that's just my comment. Sure. I, I, I think I understand the perspective. I, I'm not sure that at this point in time I have enough information to make a good decision. And I'm not sure that the co-location is a critical factor in terms of the business model. So um, that's my own opinion, but uh, I'll let others speak. Deputy Mayor, I saw your hand up. Did you want to weigh in on this one? No, sir. Okay, uh, Councillor Anstead. 
Uh, thanks, Mark Eisenberg. Through you, um, Amy, I noticed for the ball diamond improvements, you listed $6,200 in donations. Is that solely from Lister Minor Baseball, or who's that from? That was actually through, uh, um, I believe it was through the Legionnaires, oh. uh, was the um, Kinnett's, uh Ladies' Night. Oh, okay. They were recipients of that, and it's uh, to go towards um, uh, fixing up the um, bleacher seats. Oh, the bleachers, okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll actually pick up with a question of the baseball diamonds, too. I'm, I'm curious. Um, can you tell us about the performance of diamonds in other um, and villages and hamlets in North Perth in terms of their desirability to local baseball leagues or teams and, and whether there are capital enhancements that uh, might be required there and that would generate greater use of some of those, um, those fields. So I'm not sure what specifically you're asking for any clarification. Well, if, if, are there capital improvements required or warranted in Moncton, in, um, in Wallace Township, uh, I believe there's some baseball parks there. In uh, Atwood, in Trowbridge, are there things that, that are sort of on the wish list that we should be thinking yeah, about? Yeah, the, the wish list that minor baseball had given us in 2019, that's what's included in that and includes several diamonds. It's not just the ones at Memorial Park. It's, it, it covers those those pieces. So it's cleaning up some elements, putting in some fencing and benches and those sort of things. So that's what that is going to go into. Is there future infrastructure needs for our baseball diamonds? Yes. And in a couple of projects, you're going to hear what one of them is. Um, specifically, it's the ball uh, towers and the lights. Um, uh, fine, thank you. Uh, further to that, though, in terms of the smaller villages and hamlets, what's the usage like of the, the baseball diamonds and fields that are there right now? What are we seeing? For... Like Again, Moncton, in Moncton, using of them. Um, our, our ball diamonds are getting used. Uh, they're they're used quite frequently. Uh, we do actually have uh, requests that are for some of the diamonds that are here, and staff will help our user groups uh, to be able to satellite out to to Wallace, Atwood, Trowbridge, Moncton, all areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I think. Um, we have an opportunity a little bit later in the meeting to uh, provide direction, and I may ask for a more formal report on the, the use of the peripheral uh, baseball diamonds uh, to, so that we can get a sense of if there are some needs there. Um, any further questions on either uh, of these two items? Okay, um, let's move on to the next ones. Project 8 and Project 9 essentially should be discussed together. I will highlight one and I'll highlight the other together uh, so you understand why. Uh, what I am requesting is if we can get council approval for these capital projects this evening in order to be able to move forward with, with these processes. If at minimum we ask that at least Project 8 uh, gets considered for this evening, um, and we can discuss what options are for, for Project 9. So Project 8 is the List Memorial Arena demolition and redevelopment. Uh, November 25th, Council made a resolution to proceed with the demolition of List Memorial Arena. Uh, so we would like to get uh, budgetary approval to move forward with this tendering process. Steps required in this process, removal of the items from the facility, selling what items we can be sold, uh, and considering some options that might be part of the salvaging and demolition program, and relocating the hydro for the baseball lights. <laughs> There's a note in my report I just want to edit. It says it's recommended an ad hoc committee, a subcommittee of RAC, be created to discuss the site development plan. We had a RAC meeting last night, and um, our uh, committee, the entire committee, was in support of them taking on that responsibility as a whole. So we don't need an additional ad hoc. The RAC would take that responsibility. We have two council members that sit on that, so council will have some input on that. Um, and we'll get some consultants to help us with preparing for that redevelopment plan. So our goals for 2020 is to do the demolition and then 2021 
to implement the redevelopment plan, set up the, the budget, and present that for council's consideration. So I have a ref reference to the uh, project nine. Because the ball, the hydro for John Bell North and John Bell South hydro lights are actually located at the Lister Memorial Arena. So we have uh, staff are considering options. This was also an item that was identified as a 2020 uh, project, uh, replacement of the lights and towers uh, from 2019. So looking at project nine, John Bell North and John Bell South diamonds were installed in the late 1970s. Uh, 2014, there was a Ball Diamond Light Tower Engineer evaluation reported on John Bell North Towers, and the result was that they were in fair structural condition with severe corrosion with a remaining service life of five years. We conferred with our uh, financial department and the asset management inventory, and they've indicated that the towers are due for replacement this year. The uh, replacement of John Bell North and John Bell South t lights and towers is $210,000. I've spoken with our neighboring uh, groups that have had this as well, and they concur. Ninety to 100000 per ball diamond is the costs. We are hoping to submit an application for a light retrofit uh, rebate, just like we did for this facility. I put in $10,000. It's my best guess. We have been advised that that retrofit program ends December of this year. There may be another one. We don't know, but we do know that this one here is, is done. Questions? Okay, thank you. Um, just a quick question. Obviously, if, if there is corrosion and rust, uh, these things are made of steel. Um, are there other materials that they're using now to make light standards that would give them greater longevity? That's a good question. I don't know. Okay, I'll, I'll leave that for your follow-up. I will, yeah, I will investigate. Councillors, uh, your questions on these two linked projects. Councillor Seiler. Yes, John Bell North. The usage of that diamond, is it worth the new lights? It's been used, used heavily, or you want to speak on that? It's it's used a lot. That's fine. I just I was using that for in my water. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor. Through you, Mayor Todd. Yes, it, it is utilized probably four or five nights a week, so it is. My question is, if we decommission the Lister Memorial Arena. Where is the electrical going to go? We cannot be without lighting. Mm -hmm. So you see why these two projects are tied together. So we have some options. The option is that we keep that room for now. We demolish everything around it. It's not my favorite option, but it's there. We keep that power until we figure it, and then our staff demolish, and demolish that piece. Uh, other is we, and this is why I want to have approval now, is if we go through... Um, the assessments and try to get things going before season for the the electrical to to be relocated. Uh, we did find out that all of the lines are running together, so that's a good sign. Uh, so it may it will make it a little easier for rerouting it. Uh, but we're still investigating exactly what that is. I have highballed it with forty thousand. Just consideration. We don't know if it's too intense. Then, and if council wants us to relocate to demolish the entire building, then we that will delay the demolition of the building until we relocate those lights, being respectful of our users and their season. Um, I, I know that I, I heard what you just said, and so I know there's a number of variables in there, but certainly I'm interested in the timeline of, of execution around this. Um, such that the, the next season isn't in some way compromised. So can you comment on that? Uh, if we get approval from council uh, to move forward with this, then we can go ahead and start start looking into that to get that done. Um, if council is not comfortable with that, then we will go with the option of working with it in that building as a secondary and relocating it and just working with relocations of it and see what we can do. 
Okay, but Professor Benz, do you want to? Well, I'm trying to figure out why they're so closely related, because irregardless of whether we put new towers in or not, we're still moving the electrical panel. So where do we plan on moving the electrical panel to? We're still moving it. Yeah. And that's what we're working with the electricians to determine that, whether it is we had to figure out with where the lines are, so where we can actually get it maybe close to the tower, have an actual box close to the tower so that it's not such a, an extreme job. Uh, we have some other options to have it near the shed, near the curling club, some options there. Okay, but you understand my point being, are we relocating the towers to some other place? No, we're replacing the towers. The towers okay, so here's my point. They are two individual projects because one is moving the panel so that we can demolish the arena. Let's deal with that. Move the panel, demolish the arena. Um, that doesn't mean that you, that you have to replace the towers right now, does it? We were we were going on that thought as well. It was when we we were advised that from an infrastructure asset management component, they need to be replaced. That was where we had that in, but definitely can just do that. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Okay, um, and everyone needs to start reading the asset management inventory plan and replacements with a grain of salt. Because while it says the lifespan is 10 years, you may well get 15 out of an asset. So I think you have to be very wary. I'm not saying that it does, the lighting standards don't need to be replaced. What I am saying is these two projects are not connected and don't need to be sold together. Right? Council doesn't need to approve both tonight. Okay. Really what you want is for council to approve the relocating of the power panel. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Sure. Uh, CAO Snow, it looks like you have a comment uh, percolating there. I, I certainly, and I certainly concur with, with the council's comments on the asset management plan. I'm more concerned with the engineering report that says that they're potentially to, uh, uh, danger within five years going back to 2014. So that that does raise some possible public safety concerns. Second of all, having spent a lot of time around the ball diamonds, the logical location to move in the, the box would be to a tower. Um, so that would we want to make sure that because I would suspect during having done a couple um, light renovations, we probably would look at would look at tower locations, and having spent a fair bit of time at John Bell North, the lights are not in the right spot. But, so that, and although I think we can do them separately, I just don't think we, we want to make sure we're doing it correctly, too, and not, and not um, creating efficiencies. Okay, just, just before I invite you back in, Councillor Grass, anyone else want to have a comment about this? Uh, Councillor Anstead. Uh, thank you, Mayor Peace Burke. Through you, um, Amy, I, I could be wrong, but are the lights at John Bell South, are they not a different tower than the ones at John Bell North? They are a different tower. Oh, sorry, um, so would we have to replace those towers at John Bell South too? Uh, the, they, it's a, I don't have the engineer assessments of that. That was just from the asset management. Okay. They, they, were, they were installed in 1982. So the 2010 so would just be John Bell North towers? Pardon me? Like the, the 2010 would be just the the John Bell North Towers, not the John Bell South Towers. I, I'm, maybe I'm just misreading it, but it just because I'm thinking they're two they're two different types of towers, right? Yes. And the, the the John Bell North are the steel ones which are corroding and they're rusting. I get that, but the John Bell South ones are they not cement or what? They're a different material, are they not? Doug, do you know? I could, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I just uh, was wondering. I would think that those would have more of a life expectancy than the ones at John Bell North, right? So when I saw that it was John Bell North and South, I was wondering why both would have to be replaced. It, it sure looks to me like we need some more information about yeah. each uh, aspect. And I, I think that uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Councillor Barron's uh, suggested at the end of their council direction session that we separate those projects out into separate uh, sheets so that we can consider them appropriately. 
Uh, Councillor Rothwell, you want to in on this one? Uh, thanks very much. I mean, I, I understand uh, uh, Councillor Barron's uh, comments in terms of uh, keeping them separate, but if, if we do in fact go forward with Project 8, which is the uh, uh, demolition of, of the arena, uh, I think we want to make sure that we have enough money in that in that uh, budget line or capital line to ensure that that we're changing the location of the uh, of the power supply, irrespective of whether we're doing Project Nine. So we like if if the two hundred thousand is is uh, I think that's only for the demolition of the building, and if if we need if we're going to treat it as one, then we better be looking to, to get that information from the electricians in terms of what where if we have to construct a small little uh, electrical shed to put it in or, or put it in an existing building then we should make sure that that amount X is is in with that I'm fine with, and with we can having do that. them yeah we can separate do that. but we may I, need I, to modify that I, I think I'm following the bouncing ball here and you're suggesting that in fact the money for the, the power rerouting goes into the arena demolition budget and not into the tower budget. Yeah. Okay, uh, Councillor Barrons. And that would make perfect sense because it is part, to me, of the arena demolition project, the reason you have to move the panel box, right? Yeah. Um, and Amy, I'm, I'm not really trying to give staff a hard time, but we've even had supplemental information here tonight that yes, indeed, we are looking at um, moving towers to different locations. So, or possibly, and I think, um, you know, it, it's great to have the reports, but when it's hard for us, when there's some information missing, mm -hmm. to not really, like we're obviously getting confused about the report and which ones are the oldest towers because we've combined the two. I would just simply request that we have a more detailed um, supplemental report coming back for this particular Project. I'm not saying yes or no to it. I'm just saying I need to see a little bit further information, and I realize that's hard because there's a lot on your plate right now. Well, so. yeah, we've. I, trust me, I, I agree the same thing. The closest thing that I found about John Bell stuff is that they were installed in 1982. It's the only documentation I have been able to find. So uh, perhaps we come back with doing engineer drawings of all of our ball lights, and maybe that's what we're looking at for this year then we can get more of an idea of the condition of all of them and then that gives us a future direction of all of our diamonds. That could be a suggestion as well. And I apologize, just supplemental to that. I think you should probably have some eyes on the ground to take a look at those towers before the season starts, just to make sure we're not into we a public safety issue. Yeah, no, we issue. Do. Yeah, okay. our staff do. Great, thank you. Good suggestions, good discussion. Any further questions on these two projects at this point? Okay, what else do we have? That's still me, okay. <laughs> Project 10 is the uh, trails development and maintenance. So trails are the number one public inquiry for our department. It is identified in the uh, Parks and Recreation Master Plan as a need. It's also identified in our strategic plan for 2019-2022. Should just be the clicker. Yeah. Uh, so our what we're proposing here is a trail groomer, stone turner. Uh, staff have had an opportunity to test this out, and they have found the efficiencies. Uh, are, are uh, fabulous. They feel that at least it will improve service efficiencies by 30%, if not more. Um, we did get a quote for a rental. It's $900 for three days to rent it. Uh, when we are moving forward with wanting to connect... That little volume thing. Just press the, you can pause it if you want, but you just shut the volume off. There. So this is what this uh, unit is, can do. What we've found out is that not only will it help clean up our trails, make it safer, all of the groundhog holes and that sort of thing, it will also benefit our ball diamonds. So we'll be able to keep a regular maintenance of those. 
We've also found out that some municipalities are using it for, I'm not saying we'll use it, but we can, uh, for when uh, the winter, spring seasons, and some of our machinery that goes over boulevards that we need to go back and it will level it all out for us. So the staff it would take to do what this equipment is doing um, is a lot more than what you're seeing. And that's why the condition for trails just aren't there. Our staff are excited for this and our staff are really keen to grow our trails. They want to expand. They want to connect from Listowel to Gownstown, Atwood to Henfren. They also want to enhance the Moncton portion of the G2G, the Harvest Trail. Uh, they have meetings with someone from the Harvest Trail to, uh, in February. And so we can really do that with this. Um, we're thinking of, staff are thinking about how to work uh, more efficiently and effectively. So smart working essentially is what council's wanting us to do. And that's why we're proposing that. Um, we did put $20,000 in for additional materials. And this is for those new areas for us to be able to, to build on. It does need some. Uh, certainly, that's just a stepping point. This is a process. We need our staff to get a really good handle of, of our trail maintenance and monitoring. If we're having people from all over using it, we need to make sure they're safe, that they're connected. So this will be an ongoing. Uh, we'll build in our operations a little bit more, but this will give us certainly a step up. Uh, Project 11 is Confederation Park Playground. This is the playground in uh, Moncton. This is the um, equipment structure, and there's some pictures from uh, um, playground inspections to let you know the conditions of them. Um, this is not the barn park. Okay, this is the playground structure itself. Uh, playground inspections for several years have indicated that it is, it, it is in need of, of a replace. It needs to come down. So in 2020, we will do plan on removing it. Uh, with the addition of the daycare and the library coming to Elma Logan, and we've seen increased traffic of travelers stopping at Moncton. They're using the parks, they're using the trails, the washrooms, the facilities. RVs are visiting there more often. Uh, there's, there's a higher traffic usage of that. With the removal of this structure, the remaining equipment may not be meeting that demand. Uh, we do have the local service clubs working hard to fundraise. Right now, they've guesstimated 20000 I did ask for 100 but I didn't get that. <laughs> so we'll take whatever uh, they're willing to help us out with, um, but we've, we've indicated that. They did apply for the Trillium Grant for this. They were declined a few years ago, so they are considering reapplying to see if it's in. They're pretty thin, but that's what they're considering. Okay, councillors, questions on this one, or these two, I guess. Uh, Councillor Andreessen. I, ju I just want to uh, commend you uh, on the idea around the trail system. I think it's something that North Perth can really use as a, a big celebration. Um, when we were at the Roma session, they talked about celebrating the uniqueness of our communities. And personally, I think that this is a very unique feature that we could start to really... Um, publicize even more mm -hmm. and to me that it's at a, a very low cost and it's really accessible to anyone whether it's bikes or walking or running uh, doesn't matter what age and I think this is a really really great investment so thank you for that Welcome. the community is very proud of their trails and yeah. we are known for our trails we've had several people move here because of the trails so certainly is worth the investment in fact, if I may, I'm going to escalate that because I, I completely agree with Councillor Andreessen. Um, I, I don't get out often enough, but when I do take the walk down the Atwood Trail towards um, the, the landfill, uh, it's a beautiful experience and, uh, and speaks to my soul, certainly. So <clears throat> for your mayor, I find myself very interested in uh, the potential of doing more around the gateway at G2G in Moncton. I think there's a prime opportunity for us to start to develop around that gateway and promote opportunities for, for sort of day stops and, and even start thinking about uh, this through the lens of this former streetscape plan that, that might be a starting place, but I think we need to go beyond, we need to update that or refresh that in the context of 2020 and, and where we sit. So um, 
uh, you know, under council direction, I certainly would be prepared to suggest a, to enrich that budget a little bit so that we can start making first moves around um, the G to G uh, uh, gateway and, um, and doing something more significant in Moncton. Uh, Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Amy, I thought further from our conversation last night at Recreation Advisory Committee, because uh, Confederation Park uh, is uh, within the Alma Logan uh, area, I'm wondering if uh, we could approach our friends in West Perth and see if they'd be helping uh, to uh, pay towards this important project. Uh, it's a shared uh, resource there in terms of the park and so on. I, if you don't ask the question, I think the answer is always no, but I think it would be well worth uh, asking anyway. Certainly. Good idea. We could do that. Thank you. Truth. Don't ask, don't get. Uh, Terry, Councillor Simon. You may touch. Uh, <coughs> the Gonstown in connection there, how, how far are we away from trying to get that to work? Because I think it's very important that we work on that because people from here, people in Gonstown that like to come to this school and people like to go there. Yeah. Yeah. We are still working on it, but we're hoping that it's moving forward. More details to follow. Okay, thank you. Anyone further on, on these matters? I am. I continue to be blown away at the cost of playgrounds. I, I have to admit that uh, sitting recently in, in Lions Club and hearing a pitch for a hundred thousand dollar playground kind of blew me away. So I. They're not very big for hundred thousand. Well, I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, that is a significant cost. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, next. Okay. Uh, Project 12 is Robert Mather's Park Enhancements. As you know, <coughs> in 2018, we had to remove the pavilion. It was a very unsafe uh, structure um, for those that had taken tours, uh, previous RAC members. While we were having that site tour, RAC member actually leaned on it and the whole thing shifted. So we knew that it wasn't safe, especially when we looked at it and we saw children playing in the playground that could easily come and play. So that's why they were removed. Since that removal, we've had some public inquiries and requests uh, to have something put back in. Certainly, uh, the discussion of pavilion was one to be said, and we've spoken to those individuals. We've expressed to them the costs of pavilion, so you're estimating 125000 for a pavilion. And we've been explaining the rentals that we have or the inquiries for that pavilion. We don't have a lot. But we've been reassured by the community. We know that that community does use it a lot. So we've had discussions with them uh, just one-on-one. -on -one. We haven't had the public inquiries and stuff about uh, having a gazebo and a couple of larger shaded trees. From the pictures that you see, there isn't a lot of shaded areas. And if we have baseball and, and spectators seeing things, it might be a responsibility for us from a sun safety standpoint. Um, so this is a structure, uh, also thinking about effectiveness and just time and resources, getting something that's uh, you know, stru uh, structurally pre-made to move over, then we can actually have this project uh, completed. So those are our suggestions. Uh, certainly we can share this with the Trowbridge community, uh, give them those, those components. But um, you know, we feel that this will meet the needs of, of what that community uh, is uh, is lacking right now. Uh, project 13 is just the, it's, this is the EMCC refurbishment. This is, uh, just to let you know, we have, um, for 2020, these are the reserves from the library board. This is under the recreation department since it's connected to the EMCC, which is under us. Um, that's basically what we, we have in here is, uh, the reserves left to design the development phase, uh, keep the momentum going. We want to have public input, finalize designs, work on that. We are hoping we get that, that grant, but we don't. We still want to move forward with it. It might look a little bit different at that point, but we still want to have that passion and that discussions in the community. Questions on those? <coughs> Councillor Rothwell. Yeah, just one, if I may, back uh, to the uh, Robert Mathers uh, uh, Memorial Park there in Trowbridge. Uh, Amy, uh, do we have to uh, have engineering uh, on that uh, proposed uh, structure, such as they had to go through in Atwood for the, uh, for the uh, roof over the arena? 
uh, we would need to get a permit for it. So we'd go through those a processes. A permit. I'm just wondering if it actually has to be engineered because it's a uh, municipal structure. Yeah, that's, that's my question. Good question. I don't know that. Okay. And I'm not sure what the size is. I can check with our building department on that. I want to jump in on that one too, actually. I'm looking at the, a 10 by 16 gazebo for $22,000 seems enormously expensive. Um, I, 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 I tried to build one at home. I don't think I'd be looking at paying $22,000. I'd be quite reluctant to do so. So my question is, is this an off-the-shelf product that we're proposing to buy and we this found one it is, in the catalog? Or? Uh, well, this, this one is uh, on one level, and um, but we, we can certainly go with in-house building it, but understanding the demands of our staff, um, not it may not get done next year. So that's okay. Just to be aware, it's it's more resources being able to have that to be able to complete the projects. Can I encourage you though to to shop around a little bit? Because certainly we will. We uh, we're getting some quotes to be able to present to 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 council to get a budget ballpark budget. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, it looks like you want in, Becky. You've got your hand up. You need a microphone if you're going to say something though. There isn't one over there. Come to the podium. Sorry, I just thought back to Mr. Rothwell's comment before is the high school students to build a gazebo. That's what they did in Mitchell, and it was very, very successful. And um, might be an option, too, if you don't, your staff doesn't have time. Yep. It, it is on our list to, to, to look at that. This will be one of the projects to look at. We have to speak with our HR of what our health and safety requirements are, what we can do, because the, the staff, the students are still going to have to be supervised. And they'll have to be supervised by a staff. So it's, it still goes back to what our resources are. We're more than happy to do it ourselves. We certainly have the skilled components. It's do we have the time. So we can certainly keep looking into it. I, I certainly want to be sure that uh, Trowbridge has a solution. I just don't like a $22,000 gazebo solution. It seems off the shelf. That's an awfully steep price. And, um, and so I'm concerned about that. Councillor Johnston wants it known that, that he was going to make a Becky's suggestion too. I so. stole my thunder. <laughs> there, is a, there is a woodworking class that they build garden sheds right now and do it. So I don't think there's any reason we couldn't approach them. And it potentially could be built at the high school and, and, and assembled in Trowbridge in a, in a day or two. So I think it's definitely something worthwhile. We, if we just have to buy the material for the high school students to, to do it, I think it'd be awesome. And we certainly seem to have the, the, the interest of the technical staff at the high school. They've been very gracious to me in, in my inquiries about their capabilities and so forth in the context of the trades training project. So, uh, Amy, do you have further comments? No, certainly we are hope that we can connect with the high school to be able to make that discussion happen. We just haven't been successful yet. Anything further there? We, we do have washroom facilities that are freestanding in the, that uh, park at this point in time, or no? Okay. Uh, project, so I covered in my, project 14 is the Listwell Dam project. Uh, this has been an ongoing process that we have been participating in since the boards were removed. Uh, this is, what we've been doing is getting engineered assessments, hydraulic assessments, and there's still some more to follow. Uh, they actually just completed, I just got a recent report, uh, Monday or Tuesday, uh, from the recent flooding high level waters they they took advantage of that to really assess uh, you know how these changes might affect our waters and our and our structures so um, that component has happened we still need to complete our hydraulic analysis of the river and then we need to uh, submit our application uh, for request of a partial removal of the dam something to clarify I didn't I just said partial approval of dam removal it's a partial removal, and you'll see the picture that's indicated of what is, um, is being proposed. The, uh, the middle 18 meters of, of the concrete section being removed, the remaining uh, three meters on each side will remain to keep the structure integrity of the, um, of the bridge. Uh, doing this is, you know, it's doing our part to restore the Mill Maitland River in its more natural state. 
It creates a healthier river. We've seen that with some of the structures we've changed and removing the boards. It will improve uh, fish passage and uh, anticipate a net positive environment impact. So uh, moving forward with these components. We are hoping to apply for grants. And again, just three hours ago, received an email about a granting opportunity for us to take advantage for this process. I think that brings us to the end of your yeah, Project 15 is a 2021 um, capital item. Right now, it's just to make council aware. We will be coming back, or we would like to come back uh, midway through this year to get approval for a tender process in 2020 for purchase and delivery of units uh, of ice for surf reserves for 2021. The reason we want to start now, it's a 365 day build time for these units. Um, West Perth just had an order in from last May and they're still waiting to get theirs hopefully in June. So anticipating that. Historically, the municipality has been in practice of replacing ice for servicers once every nine years or one every nine years. Uh, as you can see from the age that we have here, we've exceeded that uh, and um, partially because of staff having to focus on infrastructure projects, uh, big projects that we've been responsible for. We would like to get back into uh, a, a plan here, uh, replacing two units and then getting into that process. The two units, one would be for Steve Kerr and the current Steve Kerr unit would go to Wallace and one for Elma Logan. Then we would rotate every three years. We would shift them all so that the oldest one gets replaced every nine years. That's our goal. We still need to gather some information. So right now, this is just for your information. Council requested making sure that we give you all the information of what our plan is so there's no surprises, and that's what we're doing here. We are, part of our research is looking at uh, talking to our other municipalities. Is anybody else putting in some, some bids? Um, do we do fuel? Do we go electric? What are the operating costs? What are the benefits? Uh, all of those components. So we still need to gather that information, um, and then we will come back to report to council for that. Okay, there's two projects there. Councillor Duncan? Um, I just, uh, the ice for surfacers, it, it indicates here eight years or 5,000 hours, that, but we don't seem to get anywhere near 5,000 hours on them in the, in the timeline specified. So are we actually trading too soon in eight or nine years? Yeah, so the, the reason we've uh, trading in during this time frame is that halfway mark, we get better trade-in value, as well as the other half is that it's not so much um, uh, time and effort gets put into the maintenance of it. We find now our units require a lot more maintenance than what they did the first half of their life. So that's, our, that's what our recommendation is. Certainly could work at extending it, just understanding the operating and, and repairs and maintenance might just have higher costs on the operating level. Go ahead, supplementary to that. We'll have some data brought back as in regards to maintenance and operational costs Correct. for these machines. Correct. Okay. Great. I'm going to um, follow up with a question that kind of pertains, and that is um, when you look at total departmental project spend in 2020, and I haven't looked at that bottom number, but if you look at that number, and then project what your 2021 and 2022 are looking like. Um, you've, you've got it here that the 300 and some odd thousand dollars for these resurfacers will be realized in 2021. I'm wondering if, uh, if your projections for capital investments for next year um, actually have, in, in a sense, a reduction against your current budget so that that 300,000 occupies the cap or whether we should plan uh, an even spread of the money over a three-year period so that we have uh, less of a hit all at once. Certainly we'll consult with the finance department on how we can manage that uh, future uh, sustainability of it. Part of our research is also to start discussing uh, what our other options are uh, for um, donations, but we could even look at sponsorship. Uh, there could be an opportunity that a business may want to you know, uh, give us some funds for these units. So we do need to get a better handle of what we can have for that and then what the actual cost would be for us. 
this thing that pacing makes the pain go down a bit. Um, I've seen it with smell. One of the things I've encouraged um, the direct department to look at too is is electric, which is a fairly new technology um, in the field. Now that is the road west Perth has went down. Um, so one of the things we have to do look at is life cycle and the maintenance cost electric versus versus propane combustion. I mean, there's a variety of advantages to getting rid of propane in our facilities. If you think of all the arena accidents that have happened across the country, they've almost always involved propane and ice resurfacers, so there's a huge health and safety component to it as well. But um, that's some of the research we have to continue doing with our ice resurfacing companies is just to see the advantages of the extra capital expenditure and see if that has an overall operating um, advantage and can we get more than eight or nine years out of a out of a electric uh, yes. motor versus a combustion Well, and I engine. appreciate that consideration in terms of uh, carbon footprint as well, because it strikes me that uh, given Ontario's dominant uh, forms of energy, uh, we may be able to reduce carbon footprint in that small way. Uh, further comments or questions? Councillor Rothwell. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Through you uh, to Amy, just uh, again at RAC, we talked uh, last night, uh, so the electric uh, version, do you want to just talk more specifically about that, uh, Amy? Because uh, those of us that have been to Mitchell, uh, it's not its not the... Uh, it's not that. <laughs> it's not the carousel version. Uh, it's a battery version, and that's the reason we can talk about the reason why there's a substantial difference in price then. Yeah, so West Perth is actually, they just did, uh, like I said, they did tender last year, and they're getting a new, uh, it's a battery-operated unit, so they won't have that cable uh, running around anymore. Um, and uh, so certainly for the battery life, the, the maintenance component, and we're anticipating that that means a longer life, a life cycle for, for the expense that it is um, and um, the benefits outweighing that. So we are still get some information to just make sure that it is the best decision for us. But um, apologies, would love to be able to have all this, but as you can understand, it's a lot of information, uh, and uh, we just haven't had that time. Our goal is hopefully we can have that, have a tendering process over the summer or at least in the fall so that by next fall uh, we can have the new uh, units. I, I assume during the direction we'll, uh, I'll certainly mention again that it would be appreciated if we'd look at the pacing of the funding for that just to be sure that if we can spread it out and it makes sense to spread it out that we do so because taking a big hit in one year can be a little painful. Yeah, I think we were just considering the two just uh, and maybe more units just to see whether there was any, it was going to offset any cost. That was sure. one reason. Further questions or comments on those? So, uh, Councillor Kellum. To, to uh, the mayor. Final comment through you, Mayor Todd. I'm, I'm sure uh, 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 the former Mayor Barons and Councillor Sauer, myself, you know, with the uh, with regards to the, the dam that's coming out, just so that we're all prepared that when it does come out, um, we're all on the same page. It was quite a conversation. Um, coming out so just be prepared to answer to the constituents why this is coming out when we have all the analysis is complete and stuff like that I'm going to invite the engineer to come and do a report for council and in fact it, it might warrant I'll come back to I'll get to see us in a minute might warrant a, like a public information center or some sort of meeting to uh, answer those questions in a cogent way a CNO snow and that was going to be my comment. Uh, certainly, the Memorial Park Rehabilitation Committee, which is which, council is familiar with how that committee was even constructed, um, that would be part of the part of the ongoing education process. But um, the information we're even gathering from the community members is they're being asked why it's taking so long to get the dam removed at this point. So um, I think there's been a there's been a shift in in public sentiment. Not not saying everybody, but I think that will be part of the process. The Memorial Park Committee um, members are also fairly cognizant of they're either going to have to find money to fundraise for this or grant money as well, just so it's not any significant burden on the tax base. It's, so that's something they've been aware of as well. Um, so I think that's all part of the process that they're prepared to go through. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen. Well, thank you for you, Mayor Todd. Um, we had a delegation in the fall from residents who were wanting us to think about a dog park 
and I'm assuming that this would fall under Parks and Rec. I notice it's not in here, and I, I understand we haven't had a lot of conversation about it, but um, I'm just wanting to be, you know, um, cognizant of our residents and their requests and some of their thinking around that. Um, just wondering, perhaps looking, you know, ahead, what some of the thoughts would be in terms of prepping for um, that kind of project, because it would be capital, right? Yeah, so my apologies for, for not adding that. I do have notes I was going to conclude with it, just re remarking that we're at the preliminary stages. We don't even know the actual cost of those components. The delegation has said to count on committed to the capital item itself. Um, what we have done is we've had some discussions. We will be bringing back to council with all of the information that they're requesting, including location for getting approval or getting discussion. If we get approval, then we can have some further thoughts. Um, I haven't put operating costs to that in our budget line, but that would be something that we bring forward. That the reason I didn't include it is because it's so preliminary. Council hasn't, uh, you know, approved the process yet, but um, and because the group is going to cover that, um, I hadn't done that. So my apologies if that's something I should have should have added. Um, the other pro sorry before I get into it, the other project is the Galbraith conservation area that's also a business plan that's on our component as well um, we're going to have a tour with the staff first to d take a look at the infrastructure and have those so a report will will follow a little bit more about that but that's going to be more on an operating uh, than a capital for for the moment uh, councillor Simon just a comment to councillor Since the, since the end of the, the presentation of the, of the park, I've uh, experienced, I've listened to the other inside of the Green Dog Park and what they're going through. And uh, I think we need to do some research. There's been, there's, uh, been lawsuits back to the municipality because paws have been broke open and there's people putting in stuff in the dog park and people dogs animals dying and it's 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 gotten pretty bad so and we need to go into the dog park we need to have good supervision of it and we want to be in there and make sure that we, we do our homework that's what the report will include. We're, I'm currently just gathering that information. We're waiting to hear from our insurance company. We're, uh, we've just received uh, uh, feedback from the group about the terms of reference that we've identified, the rules of the park, how this is going to look logistically, and then we can get down to what the operating costs and those sort of things. Then I will present that to council. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions on these? I think this brings to an end the estimates from recreation. So, last chance for questions or comments. Okay, um, that brings us to item five on our agenda. Thank you, Amy. Um, that brings us to item five, uh, council direction. So here's the opportunity for councillors to inject um, opportunities, issues, concerns, requests for reports to further uh, our understanding of these. Councillor Barrett. Yeah, I'm just wondering if, Amy, we can get some statistics on the use of the outdoor pools and uh, like I'm talking numbers and and the costs like realizing that no pool operates at a profit right but I'm just I'm trying to figure out um, I really do think we need to know some of of those things and whether one would be able to be combined or not it might be nice to see something like that as long and um, again, with that, it's it's more the statistics that we haven't seen. I realize that perhaps Recreation Advisory and them have seen stats on ball fields and all of that and how many we have and what we do and, and the usage of them, but um, we really haven't seen that in quite a while. And the other thing is in your Project 13, um, the... Alma Memorial Community Refurbishment. Can I, would it be possible to get a cost breakdown um, 
that's a big ticket item for a refurbishment. And I'm just wondering what we're allocating to, to what area. So we've got, do we need to take a note on this? That's, uh, are you speaking of the 2020 or are you speaking to the 2021 amount? of the actual um, construction project, so the 2021. Okay, yeah, um, that was uh, brought to council when we were when we completed the application process, so we could certainly uh, share that, but that information is all in that. That should be in there. Was the usage numbers on that in there about the rentals of the facility and, and the amounts that were recouped was that in there? I don't think that was part of the grant application. I, I don't remember seeing that part. I don't think that okay. was in the grant application. I think we okay. had intended that it would show up in the business plan from recreation to, as okay. we looked at the That is in my point. business plan. Yeah. Yeah. Long yeah. irons in the fire for yeah. recreation. Thanks, yeah. Amy. Yeah. I, I took note of um, an earlier sort of, through our discussions, a uh, request for a more detailed report on the light standards in the uh, Bell Parks. So I think we'll want that um, executed. I think Council's genuinely interested in that. Um, you heard my request, which was uh, considering uh, a different, more affordable options around that gazebo in Trowbridge. Uh, don't want to lose that project. I think it's important to that hamlet, but um, I think that that price tag looked a little off to me. And so I'd like to understand what our options are, including the possibility of of um, whether we could engage high school students in, in a project like that. That would be very community building. Um, what else have we got? Uh, go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah, go ahead. And I'm sure he can speak for himself, but I, I believe Councillor Rothwell asked for Project 8 uh, detail sheet to be amended to include the power box. Right. If we could restructure those, uh, those projects, that would be helpful to clarify. Good. Anything else that uh, council wants um, for further information about uh, these capital and project budgets? Going once, going twice, okay. All right, and council generally, the, the things that we've identified uh, for additional follow-up, everyone is generally in agreement with. I, don't see any significant objections. Um, Treasurer Hale, did you want to approach the podium? And um, if I might, uh, would Council entertain uh, um, Project 8 amended uh, at next Wednesday's meeting so that uh, Amy's able to move forward with that project? Is that a possibility? Uh, it looks like it's the general consent of Given Council. It, You're, I, I mean, it, it's putting it ahead of the, the budget approval. Yes. But I assume that the purpose of that is because there are things that we should do uh, at this point in the season in order for things to be achieved by the end of 2020 and ready for 2021, and should we need that too? Yes. And given Council's um, endorsement of the project earlier, uh, or late, I should say, in 2019, um, I feel it's something that it would be appropriate to strike uh, if we had the f numbers available. And as Amy's made the request, I think uh, if we were able to bring it back next Wednesday night as part of the capital and give council the opportunity to think through it as well. Yeah. Sure. I, I, it looks like most councillors are nodding their heads, so I think we're okay with that. Anything further? Staff, do you have anything further that um, you'd like council to direct at this point? Okay, um, seeing nothing there. Um, I don't think we have any announcements unless any of you wish to engage at this point on announcements. Uh, there is no closed session meeting, I assume. I'm looking at the clerk's table, no. Uh, so I have a confirmatory bylaw. Let the minutes show that Councillor Behrens has exited the chamber uh, per her de earlier declaration. Uh, it reads as follows, that bylaw number 8-2020 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time 
and be finally passed, and said by law, be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I move on? Councillor Duncan, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? All those in favor? Any opposed? And that's carried. And Councillor Barons is coming back to the chamber. Um, Council, anything else we need to address tonight that can't wait till a Monday? Seeing no indication of that, I have a motion for consideration for adjournment that reads as follows, that the council meeting adjourns to meet again for general council business on Monday, January 27th, 2020. Can I invite a mover? Councillor Enstead and seconded by Councillor Seiler. All those in favor? And that is carried. Council, we have our next 2020 budget meeting on Wednesday, January 29th. So it's coming up quickly. And this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>